Peter Johnson, realagriculture.com, at Wheat Pete, and we're going to talk about soil organic matter, the holy grail, what drives agriculture, what every farmer wants more of, soil organic matter. But it should be simple, and yet somehow it's not so simple to understand how we get there. So first off, how important is soil organic matter? If you could increase your soil organic matter by a half a percent, just a half a percent, then you could actually store about 23 millimeters more water. Now, 23 more millimeters for you, in, you folks in America that don't understand the metric system, that's nine tenths of an inch of rainfall, more water you could store in the soil. You say, well, okay, but what does that mean in corn yield? In corn yield, it takes about two millimeters in Ontario, two millimeters of water per acre equals one bushel. If I could increase my organic matter by half a percent, that's another 12 bushels of corn yield. There's some other things that go on which actually probably makes it more than 12, but there's 12 bushels of the corn yield if I could do that. So what does it take? 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds is 1%. So half a percent would be 10,000 pounds, but 20,000 pounds for 1%. And you say, okay, my wheat crop. I bale the straw, how much residue is that? Well, that's a ton and a quarter, ton and a half. So it would take, you know, 12 or 15 times that wheat crop to get that 20,000 pounds. Yeah, not quite that simple. Again, we have this organic matter and it's made up of various pools, but one of the things about the returns, the stover that we return, when we have grow up cover crop, all that great green leafy material, well, all the bugs eat that. And so they eat somewhere between 80 and 90% of what we return. So to get that to, this, to the actual stable organic matter pool that we want, we don't need 20,000 pounds, we probably need 100,000 pounds. So I get growers that say to me, oh gosh, I've increased my, my organic matter 1% over four years because I, I did this, this, and this. Yeah, boy. If you think about that, to get 1% and we need 100,000 pounds of organic matter, that's pretty tough sledding. So changes are going to come slowly. There's no doubt about that. But how do we get there? So first off, let's think about this a little bit differently because the new research, Kate Congreves at the Southwest Ag Conference did a great job of walking through soil organic matter. And we always used to think soil organic matter, it's just the leftover residue, the wheat stuff that didn't get broken down and maybe even some pasture from 100 years ago. Actually, what they found, the new science that's kind of cool, is that, yeah, we have some stable organic matter, we have some slowly breaking down stuff, we have the stuff we've just returned, but one of the main contributors, or the main contributor to soil organic matter, are the soil bugs. And we didn't think about that, or we didn't realize that. So as much as 80% of the organic matter in the soil is what is the residual from those soil bugs. Kind of, after they've eaten the residue, what they leave behind. So soil bug poop, if you will. So that's cool. Only, we've always thought about just adding residues and not about feeding the soil bugs. So how does that change? Well, what's really interesting is if we use the dairy example, and a great farmer from out near Lindsay, Blackstock Way, I, Ivan de Jong, he said, he used to be a dairy farmer, he's a cash crop farmer now, when he fed his dairy cows and he was trying to feed the cow, they got production to here. And then the nutritionists realized, we're not really feeding a cow, we're feeding the bugs in the cow's stomach. And they started to feed the bugs in the cow's stomach, and suddenly they got production from here up to here. We want more organic matter, start thinking about feeding the soil bugs. So how do you do that? Soil bugs are about 8 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. So this is fairly important because We'd like more soil bugs, eight to one, but the soil bugs chew on the residue. So eight to one really isn't what we need. What we need is 24 to one. They use about two thirds of that as energy. They use one third of that to actually end up as soil bugs in the soil. So at 24 to one, that's a fairly important number to remember because it's kind of cool. At 24 to one, the bugs chew through it like crazy and it's perfect. They just leave a bunch of residue behind that becomes organic matter. If you take my red clover crop, which I love red clover, red clover is about 12 to one or 14 to one. When the bugs chew through that, they go through it like skank and they leave nitrogen behind because there's so little carbon there. 
Corn stalks, 57 to 1, so it actually robs the soil from nitrogen because it's so much above 24 to 1. Wheat residue, 80 to 1. It robs the soil even more for nitrogen. So as you go through this carbon to nitrogen thought process and putting food for the bugs, it becomes really interesting how that plays. But it's not just about the nitrogen ratio, the carbon to nitrogen ratio, and about the amount we return. The other part that comes into play is the quality of that residue. So why is it, if I take a 240 bushel corn crop and grow continuous corn, why is it that I don't have organic matter levels through the roof? Because what other crop returns more residue than 240 or 300 bushel corn? Well, think about it. Feeding the soil bugs, and we're only feeding them one food source, and that's not a balanced uh, system. It, it, it just We actually get low, low, low organic matter levels, even though we're putting all that back. So there's the quality, it's the lignin content, how quickly it breaks down, but it's also the diversity. So look at the research by Bill Dean. Why is it when I grow corn, soybeans, wheat, I get much higher organic matter levels than when I have continuous corn? It's because we've added diversity into that rotation. So once we mix it up, we feed those bugs a more balanced diet, suddenly we get more organic matter. So to tie it all together, you want more organic matter because that holds more water, holds more nutrients, gives you more yield. How do you get there? It's all about the amount of residue you put back in. So grow big crops and make sure you use cover crops because that's all putting that organic matter back in. But it's not just about that. It's also about the diversity. Make sure that you rotate. Make sure that you include as many crops as you can because that as well will make you more organic matter and it'll make you a better farmer.